So I use a fair bit of uh, Moza, 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 I don't know how to pronounce it. Moza, I'm gonna say Moza, gear. Uh, I have a Slypod over here and I have a couple of their actual gimbals. That's an Aircross 2. So Moza asked if we wanted to take a look at their upcoming uh, Aircross, Aircross S. Oh yes. Um, and of course we were like, yeah, because it's a, it's a new gimbal. They said, hey, because you use with a Slypod, um, it should work hand in hand with it really well. And we actually use that combo, the Aircross 2 and the Slypod E, um, to kind of get some B-roll shots every once in a while. But this uh, is being released in December. Well, it's released today that you're seeing it, um, but it's being shot about a week, week and a half before the actual release. So just so you guys know, there's a few things I can't test right now because there can be possibly be some upcoming firmware. So just kind of be aware of that. Uh, I'm not even 100% sure if the Moza app right now that I have on my phone for controlling this um, actually has this device in it. So I'm not gonna show you the software or anything like that today. Today, we're gonna just take a look at what comes in the box. Uh, and then of course, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to set it up with a uh, Sony just ZV-1, something small, a little tiny mirrorless camera, cause that's kind of what this is for. I think they say it can hold 1.8 kilograms. Um, I believe, I think that's what it is. And uh, we're gonna test it with that camera. But one of the other cool things I think that they say in this is that it has the ability to mount, I believe, not just one camera, not just two cameras, but possibly three cameras. You know, like here's here's your mirrorless, but let's put our iPhone on there too so that you and I can get like a uh, wide angle shot, for instance. Uh, or let's put an Insta360 camera on there as well so that we can use that to get some shots or a GoPro or whatever it is. So I'm kind of excited to see this and it's a new design. So yeah, let's crack open the box and uh, see what we get. I'm all cat hairy today. You know, I put, I hung this up I don't even understand. We have three cats, of course, and that just means you get cat cat hair everywhere. So I don't have my computer here like I normally do, where I can go over specs and stuff like that. So I have I have a I have a piece of paper ready. So this is kind of what they say. It's a cross-platform stabilizer compatible with multiple devices such as smartphones, action cameras, and mirrorless cameras. I'm with you. Uh, and this is it, right? Real three-in-one. Carry multiple devices at the same time on just one gimbal. And, and as they talk, just kind of like what I was saying, put a telephoto lens camera in the middle, a wide-angle lens phone on the left. You could actually shoot forward and get like a behind-the-scenes type shot as well, which is awesome. Uh, new uh, design, they say. Minimize, minimize body comes with great... Minimize... It's a, So I'll say that better because... Smaller body means better control. I'm with you. Ergonomic design, creative joystick, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, they've uh, upgraded the axis adjustment range, so it's now wider, making it possible to carry more camera combinations. Cool. Uh, premium coated design. I'm with you. Payload update. Yes, maximum payload is 1.8 kilograms, and I'm guessing that is. Uh, so that for those of us, a lot of us, you know, you have a camera, even if it's something like a ZV, ZV-1 or a ZV-E10 or a small Nikon or a small camera or small Canon or anything like that, um, that, you know, you may want to put a monitor on it. You might want to put a microphone on it. You may want to put a light on it. So it's, it's, you, you, you get that ability with that kind of weight. Um, has a vertical mode now. Uh, one of the other things I actually liked about it is that it says here, first off, quickly switch multiple devices from mirrorless cameras, action cameras to smartphones, which is cool. Uh, quickly move your device uh, because it uses an Arca switch, Swiss plate so that you can move it from here to there for, for those of us using that like a slypod or something like that, which is awesome. And it says you can start shooting in seconds when stored in a backpack, open it without leveling or balancing. So I'm guessing it's just kind of retains your info, I guess, I don't know. And uh, it says it has a Mole a camera bag system. All right, cool, 
there's there's a whole bunch of stuff we talked about, but let's let's open this up. And it's got it's got one little one little guy in there. Yep. What I like about it, here's here's right off the bat. You can see the box isn't overly massive. And for a lot of gimbals that I've used that are not just like smartphone gimbals, but are gimbals that can actually do like a mirrorless camera. Oh, that's nice. Right? There's the little case. Um, they're usually quite hefty, which means, you know, if you're trying to carry it around, even like in a backpack or something, it takes up a lot of storage. This already seems like it, it's small. So there's, I'm guessing the, is that the top? Maybe, but it's got like a little strap. This would be great for, you know, putting it on with maybe other luggage. Anything else on there? Not really, but it's also got these little straps too. So you put like cables or whatever it is kind of in there, just kind of peel them in there. I got, right, let's see, here's some cables here. So I want to bring some cables with me. I can just kind of slide that in there. You got some cables that's not going to fall out, which is good. I got a weird watch strap for some reason. I'm sliding that in there. You probably wouldn't have a watch strap, but you could, you could. All right, let's, let's unzip this bad boy. All right, ready? Oh, so in here, first off, these are gonna be, um, now watch your camera, right? So these will allow the gimbal to communicate with your camera, like a Sony or Nikon or Panasonic or Canon, but not all of them can do this. So just make sure you head on over to their website when it's, it should be now. Um, and make sure that your camera is compatible with that. If not, it's not a big deal, but you know, you're gonna have to hit the record button off your camera, right? But et cetera, et cetera. So this one here, for instance, this is probably what I would, oh, maybe maybe not, I'm not sure. Uh, this is, as you can see here, this is um, mini USB to micro USB. One of those I'm guessing is going into the camera or into the gimbal. Uh, USB A to USB C. Again, depending on what you're what you're using, and last but not least, do I have one that's going to be nice to me? USB C to uh, USB C to Mini, right? So you get a couple options again, depending on what you need. But you got some extra bags, little little pouches for whatever you have there. Uh, you do get AirCross user manual, sweet, it's nice, right? Uh, again, what I would recommend is if uh, you connect this to the app, when you get the opportunity, then you're going to do the firmware update. It's probably really important. Now, first off, this is going to be, I think this is like the tray that you can kind of move, right? You, you will notice it's got, look, it looks like a little tripod hold right there, which will go into like a mirrorless or whatever. Uh, this is going to be... Uh, your lock, your locking mechanism for that. But I believe this, because it's kind of got two plates on there, this allows you to move the camera from like vertical position, horizontal position to vertical position, depending on how you want that. But that's that's handy. You are gonna get uh, a set of a tripod feet, which is really important because you and I need this kind of stuff when we're setting up our camera. I'm just gonna put that over there. We have more goodies aha for your smartphone right that's going to be for your smartphone which is excellent and we have your arca swiss style plate sweet 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 and is this last well sort of last but not least see look at that is so small you guys see that see how small that is oh i love how small that is i'm holding it the wrong way that's like this it's got a Cool little like trigger right here. There's your screen. I'm guessing there's gonna be your power button, right? Uh, these are your lock and unlock. See, now it's all out. So once it's there, you can just boom. USB-C charger, your trigger, your record button. And I like the design, the whole white and black stormtrooper-y kind of look, right? I'm sure that's what they're going for. I should have something like this when I go to Disney because then they'll be like, ooh, stormtrooper. They probably won't let me in with it, but they may. They may actually. I'm sure they have people. Not that I'm gonna. I want to carry a gimbal necessarily around. I love how fast that locks though. Like, click, click, click. You kind of get it in the spot, and then you just like. Where am I here? There it is. Boom. One-handed locking. Sweet deal. Uh, 
But if you take this piece out, this 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 is your bag, right? So this is your bag. You got a whole bunch of little dividers, depending on how you want to set this bag up. So get your gimbal in there, however. My guess is you could set this up so that it sits in position, it's all configured. Your camera possibly could sit in here. Again, you're not using a big camera. So cool. All right, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take this fella upstairs. Um, we're going to put this on there. And I'm gonna put my ZV-1 on it. And we're gonna see, we're gonna see how it, uh, that's nice, right? You guys see that? That's all right, that's all right, right there. Look at that. Boom. I want, I want thumbnail, there it is, boom. Can I catch focus fast enough? Ready? Boom. Maybe. I don't know. All right, I'm gonna go put my ZV-1 up on it. We're gonna go upstairs and uh, we'll, we'll, we'll take it out for a walk. All right, stay tuned. All right, guys, so I've got it on here and it may be a little tilted a little bit. Uh, I don't have it balanced perfectly, but we're gonna go outside here and you guys should be able to see how this does, make sure my tripod here is all connected. And I got it in a PF mode, so you can kind of do all this kind of stuff. And you'll notice I have my Insta360 uh, X2 up there. Now, if you do want to set up a third one, what happens is there's a little mounting hole right there, and you can actually mount another camera down. So you'd probably put your iPhone up here or your smartphone up here, and you'd put your action cam down here. But really, what we want to see is, you know, if I have it angled this way, it's a double tap. We'll recenter it. If you, I have it in like pen and I think it's pen and follow right now. But if you hold your trigger on the back, it locks it. So it locks it actually really well. No concerns with that. Uh, you do have the ability to go through. So uh, if I triple click, one, two, three, you get this mode right so a little selfie mode three three on there again i think one two three. Oh, three puts it into selfie mode then you'd hit two to get yourself back out of it so one two three brings you here if you keep hitting three it just keeps trying to go here one two takes you back the other way i'm with you and i think if you do four one two three four one of them puts you into I'm not sure which one put you into like uh so you can kind of hold it this way and spin the camera around so you get the roll uh i can't remember which one it is um but let's just go for a walk we'll do a walk this way and i would think and again this is on the zv1 which right now has i've had i got the stabilizer turned off on it but you should get an idea at least what the stabilization is like because that's kind of what's important and i'm carrying like two cameras and a little gimbal so that's that's okay right and we do this one two one two three should turn this way now we're walking back hopefully hopefully i'm in the shot uh if you are rocking a small camera like the zv1 uh and something like the insta 360 x2 just realize it's a lot of weight to one side it's doing fine um but you really got to extend kind of everything out to the side at least i had to right not a, not a big deal but something to realize i think if i were to have my phone up there instead of the x2 that would actually balance it a lot better up there i'd be able to kind of get it off to the side which may be why it's kind of pushed over but i wanted you guys to be able to see just how how that works and then you have your different modes so i'll just ready one two back she goes very nice um you do have the side button here so if you like double tap on it uh as far as i know it goes to like power depending on how much power you need right uh if you tap on it once she goes to sleep if you tap on it again she comes out uh if you tip and hold i think she'll turn off which awesome 
turn it back on again. You should come up here. Boom, very nice. Uh, the side is your mode button. I'll kind of come in the shade here. Yeah, there they are there, modes, PF, TF, FPV, lock, etc. You kind of, I'll just keep it into that one right now. But I do think there's a little button on the side. If you double click it, yeah, she just goes through them. So there's your TF, there's your FPV. So she'll, she'll turn with you, right? So she'll angle back and forth like this. You can go and do a lock, so now she won't move at all. Again, your trigger just does that, so normally I would just use the trigger. Go back here, PF again, this way. She will move this way, but she won't roll. Then you can go into TF, which means same kind of deal, but she will tilt up and down now, which is kind of nice, nice and fluid. And then, yeah, you got your FPV. So then you also have, I think, I think there's a speed that you can get it into. You may have to go into the settings to get it. I'm going to bring my power up a little bit more. There we go. That's better. Um, but like, it's nice and steady. I have to say that, right? So she does very well. And if you lock it, which I'm doing right now, you can see, especially in the stuff in the distance, up and down, right? She does very well, I think. All right, let's go back in and we'll we'll talk about our thoughts so far. All right, guys, I, I don't know if you can hear the little drive behind. So if you can, I apologize. If not, great. <clears throat> Anyways, um, it did really well. Now, there are uh, a few things to just kind of be very aware of, right? When you're looking at a gimbal, I think for one of this size, and with some of the things that it talks about, right? <clears throat> Spec-wise, in, in what it kind of promises to do so far, I'm like, yeah, it, it doesn't, which is which is great. Uh, I love the looks of it. I love the black and white. That had, like I said, that whole stormtrooper-y kind of, kind of deal, I think is sweet. But I do think you kind of really need to find almost like the perfect size camera. So if you were looking at, let's say, uh, a ZV-E10, uh, any of the Sony, like the, the 6000 lineup, um, on Canon side, if you're looking at like the M50 that's out there, or the M200 or anything like that. And they supposedly rumor has it that there will be like, uh, an M50 RF lens version coming out soon. I think that would be really great. Uh, the ZV1, I really had to push it over as much as I can to the almost to the extremities to get it to balance. Uh, it did, but you really have to kind of just watch that kind of stuff, uh, especially if you were someone I think that used a flip out screen, uh, you'd have even more weight over on that side. Uh, ZV ones just it has really weird balancing because you know, the tripod hole is not where the lens is. And I find that that kind of skews things up a lot. Anyway, in regards to bigger cameras, not that you saw this, but I'll show you some clips. Now I actually took my Canon R7 out and the R7 itself, I think body wise comes in somewhere in that 500 grams. I put a 24 to 105 lens on it. Uh, not, not a, not a, uh, L series lens, just the STM lens, cause it's a lot lighter. And, uh, I would say that at that point in time, I am really getting close to the limitations of the gimbal. It didn't, it didn't break or anything like that, but it, it is probably getting heavy. Uh, I tried the R7 with a, an older 28 to 70 EF lens. Now that lens weighs considerably more uh than than the r7 does so because it's a, a longer lens because it weighs a little bit more she i just I, it, it would constantly it would get up there and be like okay i'm good and i'd start to move and she'd be like i'm not good anymore i'm not good anymore too much weight too much weight and, and i kind of figured that uh again the the r7 with the 24 to 105 worked fine uh, I took out the 50 just to see, which well, actually the first one that I tried, the little 50 EF lens with an adapter. Again, it worked fine. Um, so just kind of be aware, depending on the lenses that you're uh, using, the camera body that you're using, if the two of them together are getting close to that, you know, 1.8, uh, then, you know, you might want to get something a little beefier in regards to gimbals. Uh, but for those of us that are using more of a like a consumery type camera, right? Especially if it's maybe like an APS-C style camera or something like that, then I think this would be 
fine. Uh, the other thing with balancing, again, I, and, and I just kind of messed this up myself at the beginning, not that I put it on camera, but you want to make sure that you stabilize, you know, with the lens, the way that the lens is going to be. So, of course, I stabilized it and got it all perfect. And then I turned on the ZV-1 and the lens popped out and then everything was messed up again, right? <clears throat> so just kind of be aware of that. Uh, it did handle the ZV-1 with an Insta360 1 X2 right here. Uh, and that was actually really nice to be able to have the two of them together with nothing that kind of would get in the way. And I do like the fact that uh, if you so choose, you can kind of see it right there, possibly at the bottom. There's a little hole that you could mount like the action camera there because that would probably be better is to have my Insta360 like pointing down and then have the smartphone up at the top uh, because they do give you the smartphone mount. Now, just realize I used one of these to kind of, whoops, mount the, hold on, mount my X2 to the top of my ZV-1. But they don't come with these. At least I didn't see them. Um, these are things that you will have to supply. So if you want to be able to mount your phone or whatever, you probably want to get like a couple, a couple of these little guys, right? Just that you can mount. They're not expensive. You know, pick them up on Amazon. You'll probably get a bag of them for 10 bucks or something like that. Um, other than that, other than, again, some of the weight limitations that you should be aware of um, before you before you look at buying really any gimbal. It's not just this one, any gimbal, right? Um, I, I think it does really well. You know, it's a really nice travel size. It is kind of the same kind of size, if not even smaller than some just smartphone gimbals. And this can do smartphones, action cameras, and fairly large mirrorless cameras. Like I said, I had an R7 with a 24 to 105 lens on it. So not too bad. I don't know price. I don't know anything because uh, when I'm filming this video, it's about a week and change before uh, this actually gets released. So I, I, I know I know nothing at this point, but I will put links down below to Moses website. If you guys are interested, uh, I may see if I can do a video uh, pairing this with my SlidePod, my SlidePod E. Uh, I'd love to actually be able to try it with a Slypod Pro, Moza, if you're if you're watching, which I know you are. I'm just I'm just saying, be kind of fun, um, and that's it. Uh, let me know down below, below again if you have any comments or questions, and if you'd like to see possibly a follow up video. I may do one just on on the app, just to make sure again when everything's released. All right, guys, the Moza Aircross Aircross S, the new one, very cool. All right, guys, I'm out. Like, comment, share, subscribe, hit the little notification bell. We'll see you guys tomorrow. Later.